five years of paranormal investigations, tonight was the first time I was physically unable to stay in a location. I endured the worst pain of my life until I passed out on the stairs and woke up 14 hours later. We believe it was due to the wrath of the poltergeist of Preston Castle. The very first time I ever saw a full body apparition was right in this hall. If you look down this hall to the second exit sign, you'll see a shadow figure walking back and forth. We don't mean you any harm. We don't want to aggravate you. We're just saying hello. The only thing is that he can be very intimidating. He stares me down, and I had to tell him to back off. Were you bully, or were you the bully? Are you guys down here? I don't see you or hear you guys. Maybe make a bang or a sound so I can hear you. Yo, yo, can't you yo, not? Get in here, get in here. There's no way. <laughs> okay, yeah, we should actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this way, Elvin. This way. <laughs> The Overnight Channel, dedicated to finding proof of the paranormal. This is night three of 30 from our USA road trip series. Whaley House, Queen Mary, Ohio Reformatory, Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, Preston Castle, Crescent Sanatorium, Sally House, Abbey Monastery, Stanley Hotel, Alcatraz, and many more are still to come. Weekly episodes, so please make sure to subscribe. Should we knock first? Like, What's ooh. the Preston knock? Is there a Preston knock? Well, there was a Cecil knock, the Cecil knock, Mary knock, cool. the Biltmore knock. What's the Preston Castle knock? Okay. The boy reformatory knock. I think we could do this. Hang on. Okay. Oh my God! Breaks it. Do it again. Do it again. Wait, wait. Yep. Okay. Come on. Let's go. You like that one? Oh yeah. Did it work? I think it worked. Oh, it unlocked it. Tired a while ago. It worked. Yeah. This is better than the last few places we did in terms of spookiness. Look at everyone that's been here too. Is that the turn to the right? This just feels haunted. With the squeaky door. Yeah, this place is definitely haunted. Yo, like uh, you wouldn't even build a place you know like this. You, and look, you know you can just look yeah, somewhere first, and you're like, it's haunted? Mm -hmm. yeah, first. First. Evan can go and prove it. Go ahead, Corey, prove it. Yeah. Prove that it's haunted. I know what you're going to do. What you know how we filmed about 400 videos so gonna together. To I'm going to walk in, uh -huh. you're going to close it. Yep. And then if I try to open it, you're going to hold it close. No. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is you know I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yet even though I know that you know that I'm going to do that, I still know that you're going to do it. I just heard something. I'm going to go find out what it was. Oh, thank God. Let's get out of here. here. <laughs> I just got so scared. Oh, my God. <laughs> Order, reform, rehabilitation, discipline. These were the words that stood for Preston School of Industry, now known as Preston Castle. Located in Northern California, from the outside, Preston Castle was commended for its values and drive as one of the best known reform schools. But from the inside of its halls were stories of abuse, malpractice, and horrors. Over time, this place of hope became filled with stories of torment, suffering, and death. There is even a graveyard on the property dedicated to the boys that have died here. Not only the youth, but the staff were also in constant danger of attack, escape, and in some cases, ruthless murder. From visual manifestations, shadow figures, disembodied voices, and people getting brutally scratched, there is no shortage of paranormal evidence. But before the investigation begins, we must look at the history of Preston Castle. In the 1890s in the United States marked the start of the Youth Corrections Reform Movement to move youth from adult prisons to their own reformatory, to learn skills in an effort to rehabilitate them. It was believed that through trade skills, these troubled youths could develop and be integrated back into society upon release. Through this increased need for reformatories, Preston Castle was built between the years of 1890 to 1894. It was massive in size with a total of 50,000 square feet, including a basement, four floors, and 77 rooms. The ages of the boys varied from 12 to 24, depending on need for space and the period of operation. The boys sent to this location either committed atrocious crimes, or in some cases, were simply abandoned by their parents. At its peak, Preston Castle was 1,000 acres, held 800 wards, 200 employees, and about 50 buildings, essentially causing the boys to live in their own bubble, one that they wished would burst. 
Although intentions appeared to be for the well-being of the boys, it quickly became an overcrowded place and stories of abuse became rampant. Within reports from Preston Castle, the superintendent would emphasize the need for more discipline and custody. They announced that each individual would be treated very differently depending on behavior and segregation was very common if not encouraged. There were many rumors of poor living conditions and malpractice from the staff, where punishments ranged from isolation, starvation, to public paddling and lashings. Additionally, when boys were first checked into the building, they were shaved, stripped, and plunged into a pool of harsh chemicals. They were forced to walk with a pole submerged under the chemicals to get rid of any pests, especially lice, on their heads. This was only the beginning of the harsh approach and treatment they received at Preston Castle. It appears that much of the malpractice began at the highest rank with the first superintendent. After several of the employees were fired, they openly accused him of mistreatment. Yet no proof was found, but it was a beginning for harsher treatment asserted by future superintendents. The second superintendent had a reputation to be ruthless as well, and was said to have methods of torture and abuse that he enjoyed employing. He unfortunately had friends in high places, so little could be done to make him step down. It was only when the media started to smear his name with stories that he did step down as well. Yet this cycle continued, time and time and time again. Nearly all through its history, Preston Castle was full of scandals and horrific stories of misconduct, not only from supervisors or officers, but all of the other staff members as well. In 1909, Dr. Randall was forced to resign due to investigations of an instance where he imprisoned one boy in an attic for 90 days. With every year, Preston Castle seemed to accumulate more stories of abuse and neglect that took place particularly in the dormitory of the building. Due to all of the horrific occurrences, it is considered to be one of the most haunted areas of the building. Many people express feelings of being unsettled when entering the dormitory. Figures are often described looking at the visitors from doorways around the various parts of the building. These horrific conditions became so extreme that in 1923, a journalist from the San Francisco Daily News went undercover as a ward to see it for himself. Through his expose, the rumors were brought to light as fact that the officers would administer terrible punishments. Fights would often break out among the boys, and in one of the worst cases, a riot began after a boy was stabbed during a fight. This reporter would stay there and purposefully tried to be disobedient against orders and after picking a fight himself, was sent to solitary confinement for 15 days. He wasn't the first to be sent to the cells. Evidence of scratches on the walls, names, crosses, and many other things show the psychological torment countless boys before him endured. No one was safe in Preston Castle. There was a constant battle between officers and wards. It was said that new escape attempts would be made on a weekly basis. A more official count in the first 18 years of operation are 66 boys managed to escape or attempted to and were caught. The escape attempts could result in bloody fights between officers and wards. One in particular left a guard nearly dead. On April 20th, 1904, one of the youths, Edward Rowe, attacked a night watchman in the dormitory. He, along with an accomplice, tried to escape via water pipe. The attack was so severe, the watchman almost died. Although they escaped, they were later caught and sent to Folsom Prison for adults instead. They were sentenced to 10 years for assault to commit murder. Escapees have been shot and killed during attempts to leave the property, while murder attempts were common against the guards. There are many boys and guards believed to still remain on the property due to anger they feel towards this place, resulting in many visitors feeling heavy or uneasy energy all throughout the 50,000 square foot building. Even when it came to surgery, there was very little emphasis on safe practice. Due to this, the infirmary is a hot spot for activity from the many deaths and immense energy of suffering that was prolonged there. This is in fact the place that I started to feel the worst pain of my life. And yet there is still one more brutally notable incident of the castle. In 1950, one of the most brutal deaths occurred. The head housekeeper, a favorite among the boys, was beaten to death beyond recognition in the basement. The killer was never discovered, although fingers were pointed from students to staff, yet nothing was proven. There is an abundance of paranormal activity documented in the basement that points to a dark entity residing there. From disembodied voices to phantom smells, knocks, mist, and an entity that enjoys messing with technology, there's a lot that is said to happen 
in this part of the building. After many deaths, rumors, and outrage from the media, Preston School of Industry closed partially in 1960, and a new facility was built nearby, with the focus turned there. Many of the buildings that made up Preston Castle were left vacant and fell into disrepair until 2001. The castle and the immediate surrounding property of 12.9 acres was deeded over to the Preston Castle Foundation by the state of California on November 7, 2014. Over the years, Preston Castle has become renowned for its history and paranormal activity. This building holds many secrets that remain among the dead that once lived here, with many reports of strange sounds, anomalies, slamming doors, falling objects, orbs, sudden gusts of wind, phantom voices, and phantom touches. The truth of all of the horrors that occurred behind closed doors might be lost to rumors, but through investigations, more of the puzzles are put together. Whether answers will ever be found is unclear. However, it is clear that there is an evil darkness that lingers, making itself known to anyone who enters. Connie, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Josh, you nice might forget our names you. in a minute anyway. I might. It's all good. Just pick the most white boy names of all yeah. time. Oh, Tyler, Todd, Kevin, Carl. Yeah. All right. Like <laughs> Alright, so we got Tyler. Tyler, 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 Tyler,
scared guys, you know? It ranges from everything from like some orphans to just really bad Bad, people like people kids, that did right? bad things, yeah. Like young criminals, really. Pro yeah, yeah, so That's instead of crazy. sending them to like Folsom or some of the adult prisons, this is where they sent them. And um, I think the idea was to rehabilitate some of these kids and um, hopefully make them a productive part of society once they were released. Mm -hmm. But with that idea, I think came with a lot of heavy-handed strictness mm -hmm. yeah. and things that weren't, you know, so pleasant. During our Halloween haunt, I was actually standing right here because there were people that were coming through right here, so I was scaring them as they were coming mm -hmm. in. And um, I had pigtails in, and I felt one of them being tugged. But yeah, this room, it's a little, I don't know, I don't know if it's because it's so small and I don't even know what it was used for, but um, it's always been kind of a, a little bit of a creepy area. Yeah, interesting. So, I see a lot of um, shadow people coming through here. In there, um, like I said, we have some equipment and stuff go off. It's a good place to do, to sit on the beds or lay on the beds and do some EDP work. Um, Sometimes, you know, we get them actually cussing. We've had them dropping F-bombs and different yeah. stuff like that. And I will say, yes, we have shadow figures. I've seen them walk through here. All of us heard audible footsteps down the hall here, and we heard uh, chatter mm -hmm. going on. It sounded like full-on conversations. I thought somebody was outside. So this is the bathroom. We had um, someone come in here with one of those um, SLS cameras. They found back over in this corner um, two figures. I don't even know how to say it politely, but there was something going on between the two. They were yeah. like fighting. No. no, like no fighting. No, that's the opposite of fighting. Opposite of fighting. Love Loving. 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 Is that what your parents told us to do at night? Possibly. Oh. They were back in that corner. So, um, <laughs> can you tell us which position? I know. <laughs> God, I you know. Corey's waiting. Look, they already said they want to do reenactments. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> they can tell me. This is yeah, could you like explain yeah. what they were doing so they can reenact? I was not was here for it, uh. but. That's what I was But if you, if you could have chosen to have seen what, what positions would you have been like? Oh. I don't know, like, maybe. <laughs> was it like this? Maybe. I don't, know. I don't know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the politest way to say but stop, you ever. You know what, it could have been fighting, I just don't know, but that was the consensus. Could Not that, I mean, it was, Did you just Joe, I just heard that. What was that? That was I a full on, like, like, a baby cry or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless that's just what was that? That could be from the two people making love. Oh, it did kind of yeah. sound like yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. struggling yeah. noise yeah. a little bit. Could still be that. Something that's that a lot of us will do um, is we'll sit right here. If you look down this hall to the second exit sign, you'll see a shadow figure walking back and forth. No way. Way. Yeah, yeah. The only thing is that he can be very intimidating. Mm -hmm. Not like I can see him, but I have felt him follow me from over here to down. And I'll show you, there's another room uh, down here. It's called our day room. He stares me down and I had to tell him to back off. Yeah. And that is one thing you have to do with him is that you have to tell him to back off if he's awesome. bothering you. Yeah. So awesome. He'll listen, okay. but you have to be firm. You have to be firm with him. Great. And there's so many people that have experienced him here. It's just, he is one of the the main, I would say, entities that we have here. Do you here. know his name? We don't. We don't know his name. And we don't know what he was doing here. Did you guys just hear the that? The moan? It was like, mm, yeah, yeah I, I, I straight up heard that. I, I just heard that. that. Has so, anyone ever not told him to back off and just let him run its course? You know, he has almost that angry feel to him. Like, okay. um, like well, kind of like he doesn't want to be bothered, and he's mad that you're in his spot. Mm -hmm. And this is his. This is his domain. Yeah, We've had yeah. some experience in here. We had a. Um, we we did just a docent night, and um, we were standing um, kind of just like this, all you know, in the room, and you saw what looked like. Um, little twinkling lights, different colored lights that were uh, mm. surrounding one of our docent's uh, feet. Little fireworks, really? little tiny, tiny little 
twinkling lights around this guy's foot. We were like, what is going on? Were you seeing that in person? Or yeah, or? yeah, no, in person wow. we saw. What? We were seeing little twinkly it. lights in here, just uh, just on the floor, just around that one guy. That's kind of cool. It was actually the same guy that had to tell the man down here to back off. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's the intake room. That's where our gentleman seems to mm. to reside, and that's where they brought the boys in. So I'll show you where he's at. This is where our, our man likes to uh, hang out. If you look, you'll see he'll block out, he'll block out the light, mm. walking back and forth. Um, this is back in this. It's almost like a little Winchester-y type. Um, it's a stairway that goes to nowhere, but it has been blocked staircase off. Staircase that goes to nowhere? Yeah, if you look around it, if you look back through there, there's no. a staircase that goes to nowhere. And that's um, typically where we think he kind of hangs out. Um, that's his... Definitely it's like that the Winchester, there was a staircase that went to nowhere. If we start getting like actual shadows, it'll be like the first time since doing this I've ever seen a shadow. So kind of excited but scared at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of people when I give historic tours say, you know, well, what about you? Yeah. And I generally re respond with, well, just because the spirits aren't talking to me doesn't mean they're not talking to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But my one experience was standing at the base of the outside front staircase. Yeah. And it was movie night on the patio. We had a giant blow up movie screen and 200 people watching movies on the back patio. Yeah. And I was standing at the bottom of the staircase right at sunset with a young female docent. And we were about this far apart talking. Mm -hmm. And behind me, I would describe it as about four or five feet away, in a calm adult male voice, I heard a voice say my first name. It said, mm -hmm. Carl. And I turned around and looked, and there's nothing there. So first reaction is, Carl's cracking up. Mm -hmm. So I looked at uh, Eva, the young docent that was standing directly across from me, and I didn't want to give her something that she could just go, oh, yeah, 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 that's what I heard. I said, did you hear something just now other than me? And she said, yeah, I did. And I said, what did you hear? She said, I heard somebody say your name. Mm -hmm. And I said, who? Yeah, that's cool. All right, Allison, how are you uh, feeling? Feeling, you know, I've had better days. Really? Yeah. When? Huh? Name one better, better day. day. Name, name 12 better days. 12 better yeah. days? Um, August 3rd, nope. 1997. Yeah. What was that yeah. day? Uh, rode, uh, rode bike for the first time. Yep. A little late to that. Seven years old. Solid. Ten we more. Have, we don't have time for you to make up these days, okay? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't mention July 28th, 2018. I can never forget that day. Well, you don't remember what happened? He remembers. No, we remember. He remembers. Can you that memory it? is uh, <laughs> inside of both of us forever. I bet it was. He Dang. remembers. Down this hall, we have been seeing like mists okay. forming towards the end of the hall. And then this back door here, um, one of our uh, docents, she saw a full body black uh, shadow man go shadow. walk through uh, or past that door inside. So, Jeez. how long um, ago was this? Uh, this last year. Oh, great. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, within, I would say, the last six to eight months. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, this is the Company B dormitory. Oh. All these kids' beds, this is where they slept. It wasn't just me, a couple of us saw a ball roll through here. You'll see little twinkly lights again. You might hear voices in here. Boys that slept in here are the ones that actually worked inside this building. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank so, you. Yeah, thank you so if much. If you have Seriously. any more questions about stuff, so. All right, let's head down then. All right. Let's go. All right, we have all of the gear laid out. There's Man. quite a lot. And if you are, are new to our channel and you don't know what a majority of these are, these are all REM pods, completely different kinds. Obulus, there's cat balls in here, flashlights, even the bear is a REM pod. K2, dowsing rods, the SLS to pick up images, motion sensor music box, just kind of another spirit box. And then this is one of the newer items that we have. And these are full thermal imaging, military grade goggles. Wow. And Matt, you said earlier that down in the basement. That would be sick to look down that hallway. Oh, yeah, that is long range. 28 times zoom, optical zoom. So it can see clearly for about 300, 400 feet. 
Dude. Everything that we need is here. What do you guys want to do? Start as a group or go solo or? Yeah, I think we should start, start as a group. Start as a group. Always. Oh, yeah. group? Feel the house out a bit before we just split off to our yeah. deaths. Okay. Yeah, 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 let's yeah. go there. Okay. Yeah. The medical wing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, let's go to that place. Can you guess what I'm going to grab? My heart. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my second guess, it's always the Rembrandt. Oh, okay. Yo, this is my baby. Let's head over to the infirmary. Cool. I think I'm gonna dress up in the doctor's outfit and stir things up. You're gonna what? Dress up in the doctor's outfit. Why would you do that? You don't have a PhD. You're not know. Phil. Follow a ghost hunter. All right, Dr. Josh, let's go get your Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Follow me. Follow me. It's good to go to haunted places and reenact stuff. Like at the Lizzie Borden house, I went around with the axe like this, and it stirred up a lot of activities. Sometimes it could be kind of bad. Well, I'm not antagonizing the ghost. It's just some things trigger things. Oh, we're going really in. We getting the scrubs on? I wonder whose these were. All right. Oh my, what a scrub. They call me oh Dr. Josh, and I'm here to do operations. We should all lay in the bed, and Josh should come around and diagnose all of us. We, we should also say hello for her. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 should. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Matt. Hello, my name is Corey. Hello, my name's Josh. Hello, my name's Elton. We are uh, not staff members here. Oh, that just, I'm hearing voice that voice. Or voice. No, this just literally went from 100 to 1% in one second. What? But well, you heard that. I was like, was like upstairs or something too. The same or a voice? Yes, yes. Yeah, right? Wait, what happened to the SLS? Just went to 10%, like immediately. Damn. Lily right now just went phoom, down to 10. Well, if there is anyone in here that you want to talk to us, we have plenty of toys around the room for you to play with. We don't mean any harm. We're not mean, we're not bullies. We're not that much older than you. We just want to talk to y'all, maybe hang out a little bit, yeah. and then we'll leave. So there's a couple of tiny balls, there's one in the hallway, there's one in each of the chairs, there's one connected to both cameramen. <laughs> I have to baby chat one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was crazy. Something just up in the bed. Which bed? Laying down. Uh, this bed. Well, I'll just standing one? But it literally just completely turned off right now. It just went to dorm. Well, maybe that means that they'll gain some energy. You want to put it underneath? Yeah, man. Cool. Still cold. So right, that's remarkably difficult to set off. You really have to. They have to touch the chest, basically. Yeah. Oh, like that. Okay. What? It wasn't doing that before. Uh -huh. Can you touch it again? Is that box on your bed? Well, let's start. All right. Should we try laying on the bed and then putting like a cat ball at our feet? I feel like we one's fine and let's go do B roll. Yeah, let's do that. Because uh, we're all gonna be contained in the room. Yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. So go off B roll. Yeah, you're gonna do B roll for like thirty minutes probably. All right, thirty minutes. Probably really need it. Go guess. Yeah. Oh. It it agrees thirty <laughs> minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I bet you that ghost is laying in the bed. Evan is a cat boy. Because you guys are all in the bed. Hello everyone, I'm the doctor of this room. Um, for anyone who's sick. Hey, child. Oh, that's, that's what this head. just said. Hey, child. Don't break, Josh. Yep. Anyone who's sick or needs any help, please lay in this bed here and I can take care of you as I'm taking care of the other three people here in this bed. What did Sam the Obelisk, by the way? It just said pop. Pop. Like soda pop? Mm -hmm. You want some pop? Soda pop pop, and I don't care. Soda pop pop, and I don't care. Oh! Ooh. You know that song? That's good. Can you touch the chest again on this bed? One more time? Yep. yep. Thank you. Good job. It's cool, isn't it? It just lights up, makes noise. Do you want 
soda, some kind of sweet. Oh, oh! Wow. Right when you brought up treats. Light up the tr yeah. Do we have any treats with us? We don't. We can get some. We could get some. Dude, this is really good evidence. Well, I think he wants some pop. Could you stop touching it for a second? Because I have a question. If you're in pain, on a scale of 1 to 10, could you make that box go off for the scale of pain you're in? Maybe we can help you. So 10 would be the most, 1 would be a fever, stomach ache. You want us to turn the light off? Corey? Down over there by the desk, there is a device on the table. Can you walk to it and touch it for me? It's a music box. It'll play a cool sound. If you want to leave this place, can you give us a sign? Communicate. Yeah, communicate. Communicate. That's all we want to do. Just saying hi. You can introduce yourself. What's your name? This tool that I'm holding in my hand, it picks up your words. Duh. Her, though. Communicate her, though. And then before that, it was Beth. It, it was like, let Beth communicate her, though. Hmm. That's what it's just said. Are we talking to Beth? Maybe Beth was a nurse here? Maybe. All right, how about this? We're all gonna get up off the beds. And if that's what you wanted, you gotta make a device go off. But if you don't do anything when we all stand up, we're just gonna lay back down. We're gonna get comfortable, okay? There you go. Oh, you asleep? We need bed now, it hurts. What'd you say? Right now, it just hurts. It hurts? Have you ever had appendicitis before? No, 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 no it's terrible. It feels like your insides are being like ripped apart. That's what you feel like right now? Mm-hmm. In here? Mm-hmm. Do you want to get up? Mm-hmm. Do you need help up? No, I really like, don't want to move at all. It literally feels like there's like one of those gardening tools. Just doing this. Man. Are you doing that to Elton? Maybe you 
should get up if you can. You remember how seasick I got on that boat? Yes. Mm -hmm. But worse, like that level of pain. Here. That season? Here. Here and climbed. Could. Oh, wait. This could be like a. It's like the poltergeist house. What happened when you do that? The poltergeist? It would say about 30 words. What? Like. A minute straight of just words after words. Suit. Suit. Should we move rooms, you think? Yeah, you down on something? Yeah, I'll go. Get the music box and the cat ball. Got the cat ball. Off the generator? Oh, I didn't know there was one over here. I've been to a few places. People got sick from like actual ghosts and things. And this is definitely a case. Oh, guy can see it. Uh, oh, no, he's actually. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Oh, that's awful. I it's actually kind of scary because we could be next. Oh, God, I don't want to be next. I really don't want to be next. Bro, if I were you, that'd be kind of nuts to go back in the castle after okay, that yeah, experience. Do you, so do you? Like, why did you just get sick? I don't know. The last time this happened was in uh, Boston. Wait, what'd you guys hit in Boston? FK Mansion, I think you were there. We were oh. down in the basement. Oh, the basement's oh the worst God. place in SK. What Hands happened down. right before FK Mansion? The f SLS died. And I had it in my hand, right? Wasn't that me? Why am I just thinking about that right now? That's actually weird. You could chill in the RV for like 30 minutes so we could finish up that room and then come get you. No. I'll, I'll go get the keys and go get a jacket. And then wherever you guys are, I'll join you. What? Oh, this. That's the, where the room pop was. Yeah. But that's where I got sick. Yeah. Just leave. 
sleeve one there for the whole length as this thing. Dude, how is it still going? Exactly. I mean, dude, think about it. Even the very right hair is going. Yeah, it's true. The red pot takes a lot more power. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. As soon as you put the chocolate there. Oh, you're welcome. You want more? Is that what we're doing here? Yeah, you offered the whole thing. <laughs> then put me in one chocolate. What do you want? You want more, yeah? There's two. We can go literally just right over there to that side, or we can go to the hallway where the guy's apparently in white would be down there that went by. Yeah, the tour guy. I want to go upstairs. You want to? Yeah, get away from this floor. Okay, sure. Okay, let's yeah, go upstairs. I'm cool though. with that. Yeah. All right, let's get all the places. Yeah. Yo, Matt, get get that one on the bed. That one. Oh, oh yeah, me get it. <laughs> leave, leave that one. Okay. You want to leave it? Yeah, I can make it when we come back later. See if he's still there. Dude, it's okay. nuts because as we're leaving, it's just not going off yeah, like at it's, all. He's he or she is happy with the that chocolate. That is. Uh, Elton, do you want me to go over and grab one? Okay. Dude, that is actually scary. Like, that's legit. Yeah. Like, seriously. Yeah. What was that? You heard that? Yeah, what was that? Like yeah. Yeah. Like, like, a a like a shoe stuck to the floor and then it comes yeah. off. Yeah. Okay, so an update now. Elton just ran back down the stairs to go back outside to throw up some more. We don't know. Yeah, we actually don't know how he's actually feeling. He's usually like a tough guy that wants to stick it through, but I don't know. I think he could be legitimately sick or actually someone's really attacking, yeah, him. attacking yeah. him. So to get as much evidence as we can, I think that we should split up in groups right now. Yeah. It could be really you dangerous. Two yeah. Can go together. Together. Yeah, take Evan. Okay. And then I'll stay up here with Kyle, and then we'll just see what we can get, and then you if, know, maybe give it an hour, or if Elton comes back in, that's yeah. when we regroup. Okay. Right. But we can't be wasting time, you know? Yeah, we can't let's waste make time. the most of us. We also gotta be super safe. Yeah, but let's make sure he didn't get sick for nothing, you know? Let's still have a good, yeah. a, a good of a experience. We can I have. think he's getting attacked by something. I'm 100% sure. sure. He's, he was fine when he walked in here. No, really All of a sudden, not. he said the following thing, and now he's like throwing up. He's like gone. Yeah. She she like believes that he's definitely experiencing something, not just who sick. who does Connie. Yeah. Con the tour that was running yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. She thinks that. Yeah. And what we were in the medical room. Yeah. So Where people would go when they were sick. Exactly. Right. So they could have put whatever they had mm -hmm. on Elson to make him feel what they went through. Yeah. yeah. Some negative energy. Yeah. All right. Well, I think. So what? Well, you want to go in the basement? We're gonna find that shadow dude. Yeah. That is everyone's scared of. Too. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, yo, if one of you guys feels sick. Just, just talk and like. I rather care about our health more than yeah. like anything else. So yeah, just someone to come let us know. You know? Yeah. Like seriously, like if you yeah, if you real, get like real. a headache or it, even if you feel pain like on the back of your neck, mm -hmm. like literally rub it yeah. and like say yeah. a prayer because yeah. that means that something's trying to attach to you. Yeah, this, yeah. this is really dark. I got my cross on me. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go, Jesus Christ! All right, all right. Let's head down. Who's coming with me and uh, 